Welcome! Today we'll be going through two very useful tricks when dealing with polynomials with integer coefficients. If you'd like to prove the two lemmas before looking at the solutions, feel free to pause the video here. First, we will show that a minus b divides p of a minus p of b, where a and b are integers, and p is a polynomial with integer coefficients. It is very well known that a to the n minus b to the n is equal to a minus b multiplied by a to the n minus 1 plus a to the n minus 2 times b plus a times b to the n minus 2 plus b to the n minus 1. So a minus b divides a to the n minus b to the n. Now let our polynomial p be such that p of x is equal to cn times x to the n plus cn minus 1 times x to the n minus 1 plus c0, where c0, c1, c2, cn are all constants that are integers. Then we have that p of a minus p of b is equal to c of n times a to the n minus b to the n plus c n minus 1 times a to the n minus 1 minus b to the n minus 1 plus all the way to c1 times a minus b plus 0. Now we clearly see that each term here has a factor of the form a to the k minus b to the k, which in turn has a factor a minus b. And so a minus b divides p of a minus p of b. Now we will show that if a is congruent to b modulo m, then we have that p of a is congruent to p of b modulo m. Again, we're working in the integers. And again, let's have p such that p of x is equal to cn times x to the n plus cn minus 1 times x to the n minus 1 plus all the way to c0, where c0, c1, c2, cn are all integers. Then we have that p of a is equal to cn times a to the n plus cn minus 1 times a to the n minus 1 plus all the way to c0, which, since a is congruent to b modulo m, is congruent to c of n times b to the n plus cn minus 1 times b to the n minus 1 plus all the way to c0, which is equal to p of b. And so we have that p of a is congruent to p of b modulo m. Now we'll move on to some problems. Let a, b and c denote three distinct integers and let p denote a polynomial having all integral coefficients show that it is impossible that p of a is equal to b, p of b is equal to c, and p of c is equal to a. Please pause the video here and have a think about the problem on your own before proceeding to the solution. So we have that a minus b divides p of a minus p of b which is equal to b minus c. Similarly, we have that b minus c divides p of b minus p of c, which is equal to c minus a, and c minus a divides p of c minus p of a, which is equal to a minus b. Now, if we have that one integer divides another, then the absolute value of that integer must be less than or equal to the absolute value of the thing it's dividing. And so the absolute value of a minus b 
is less than or equal to the absolute value of b minus c, is less than or equal to the absolute value of c minus a, is less than or equal to the absolute value of a minus b. And so the absolute value of a minus b is equal to the absolute value of b minus c is equal to the absolute value of c minus a. With our loss of generality, let C be the maximum of A, B, and C. Note, we can't just have an order without loss of generality, as A, B, and C are cyclic and not symmetric. And so what we have is that C minus A is equal to C minus B, which in turn means that A is equal to B, contradicting the fact that A, B, and C are distinct, and so we cannot have this polynomial such that p of a is equal to b, p of b is equal to c, and p of c is equal to a. Now we'll move on to our final problem. Find all polynomials w with integer coefficients satisfying that for every natural number n, 2 to the power of n minus 1 is divisible by w of n. Please pause the video here and have a think about the problem on your own before proceeding to the hints and solutions. Hint number 1. Consider some prime p such that p divides w of n. What else does p divide? Hint number two. Fermat's little theorem might come in handy. Solution. Consider some prime p such that p divides w of n. Then by lemma two, this means that p divides w of n plus p, as n is congruent to n plus p modulo p. And as w of n divides 2 to the power of n minus 1, we have that p divides 2 to the power of n minus 1, and also that p divides 2 to the power of n plus p minus 1. On one hand, by Fermat's little theorem, we have that 2 to the n plus p, which is equal to 2 to the n times 2 to the p, is congruent to 2 to the n times 2, which is congruent to 1 modulo p, as p divides 2 to the n plus p minus 1. But we also have that 2 to the n is congruent to 1 modulo p, as p divides 2 to the n minus 1. And so what we get is that 1 is congruent to 2 to the n times 2, which is congruent to 1 times 2, which is congruent to 2 mod p. So 2 is congruent to 1 mod p. But we know that no such p exists, as p is prime. So no primes divide w of n. Hence, w of n must be a constant polynomial. And this constant polynomial also can't have any primes that divide it. And so w of n is equal to 1, or w of n is equal to minus 1. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to drop a comment in the comments down below, and see you next time.